Come on, buddy. Scoot. And there he goes. There is so much we don't know about the animal kingdom. They just don't teach us at school. That's what we're here for. Today, we're going to learn about why pandas sit alone when they're sad or why this fish covers itself in snot to get a good night's sleep. What does it mean when dolphins swim around you? And why in the world giraffes choose to fight like this? Okay, let's get started. Pandas like to sit alone and act like human babies by throwing tantrums. Pandas are the celebrity animals because of how much hype they get, and usually you'll see them slouching down all alone on a side. In fact, to a regular human, they might look sad or even depressed, but that's far from the truth. Pandas are just really antisocial. Other than mating, they just really don't like being around other animals, including other pandas. In fact, they have a sense of smell that alerts them when another panda is nearby so that they can avoid them. The reason we know so much about pandas is from studying them in zoos. Their wild cousins are so rare that it's practically impossible to observe them. The next time you see a panda slouching and sitting all alone, don't worry, they're perfectly fine just spending a little alone time. Humans might like to spend time with others, but they value alone time just as much. We actually have a lot in common. Look at this baby panda throwing a fit right as the caretaker took its favorite toy away. After throwing a fit and not getting the toy either, it just sat there and huffed. Yup, almost like a real human being. The weird thing is, there's a reason pandas and humans evolved their upright postures. It could mean we're close relatives. It might not sound convincing since we don't eat bamboo all day, but just swap that out with Cheetos and there you go. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> Goats faint whenever they're scared. Okay, so when we get scared, our bodies go into fight or flight mode. But for these little goats, there's a third option which is quite cowardly, faint. And it's not just one or two goats, there are millions of these cowardly little guys. Fainting goats recently became popular, and not bruised people are sadistic enough to scare them. But because a whole herd of them, fainting is kind of funny. It's not their fault either. This strain of livestock is called myotonic goats. They have a genetic condition that causes their muscles to stiffen completely when they're startled. The goats don't actually faint, their bodies just sort of lock up as their muscles freeze. But luckily, this condition doesn't hurt them. They can be scared several times, but they won't be in pain. Come on, buddy. Scoop. And there he goes. Okay, bud. Pygmy lizard shoots blood from its eyes as a defense mechanism. Evolution has given us really weird mechanisms and behavior, and one of the weirdest things is how the pygmy short-horned lizard defends itself. These desert lizards live in a dry and rocky terrain, and their skin does enough camouflage to keep them safe from any predators, but they can't really become invisible to everyone's eyes. That's when their unusual defense mechanism comes in. Whenever a horned lizard feels threatened, it can literally shoot blood from its sinuses and out of its eye sockets. If that isn't a trick right out of a horror movie, we don't know what is. Not every lizard has the ability to do this, though. This species has two constricting muscles around the major veins in the eyes. When these muscles contract, they literally cut off the blood flow to the heart. Talk about a daredevil. I have never seen a horny toad actually shoot blood out of its eyes, but it just totally shot blood. Out of my out of it. It all pulls in the head and with a rapid motion. Its pressure gets so strong that it can squirt blood several feet away. What's even more amazing is that this process can be repeated many times if needed. Hopefully, the lizard doesn't become anemic after a few squirts. We still don't know how it can recover so rapidly either. So I just picked him up and he squirt blood right out of his eye fish secretes a mucus envelope before sleeping. What are you willing to do for a good night's sleep? Are you willing to weave your own mosquito net every night? Didn't think so. Look at these parrot fish. They're already pretty weird looking, but their bedtime routine is even weirder. In the mornings, they just roam around scraping algae off of rocks and corals, but at night they hide in crevices and sleep. Yes, these are fish that sleep, but before they do, they secrete music from their gills. They keep 
keep secreting till it creates an envelope around them to provide them with extra protection. Sometimes it takes them an hour to do that, but they do it every night. It masks the scent of the fish so that other predators don't chomp on it during its slumber. But also it protects it from parasitic isopods. This family of isopods are especially nasty because their larvae feed on the blood of fish. In other words, they're the mosquitoes of the sea. And the parrotfish doesn't want bites all over it at night, hence the mucus cocoon. It's a really gross solution, but hey, whatever works. Tasmanian Devil Makes a Blood-Curdling Scream The actual devil might appear without a sound, but the Tasmanian devils make the world's weirdest sounds. Their growls sound like a blood-curdling scream that is so realistic you might think it's coming from a human. These small creatures are the largest carnivorous marsupials with the most powerful bites out of any mammal. Moreover, they make a whole range of sounds and none of them are pleasant. <laughs> From raspy screams to shrieks, growls, snorts, and grunting. If you're in the mainland of Australia, you might hear them being fed at night. And although they're solitary creatures, they can manage to tolerate each other's presence while feeding. But even during their feast, they have the worst sounding conversations. <coughs> No one taught them table matters so they don't stop with their teeth baring and lunging when they are eating. Its screams are so iconic in all the wrong ways that the early settlers heard these screams and decided that it definitely was the devil himself. Unfortunately, they've been classified as endangered now and have been impacted by a cancer called the devil facial tumor disease. Mantis shrimp punches at the speed of a bullet. Saying that the mantis shrimp packs a punch is not very accurate. Because it doesn't pack a punch, it packs a 22 caliber bullet. This shrimp isn't even a shrimp. It's actually a distant relative of lobsters and crabs. And at first sight, they seem like a beautiful mesh of vibrant colors. Just because they look like a hot mess of colors doesn't mean they're just looks. In fact, when they're threatened, they whip out their appendages at the speed of 75 feet per second. That's literally 50 times faster than you can blink. Get him. There it is. Look at that. What a crazy little battle right here. Ho, ho, ho. These creatures are barely a few inches big, and the blow they deliver is about 15,000 newtons. The scientists who were studying them, but their cameras weren't even that advanced. You can tell they were a lot of demand. After a few expensive purchases, scientists realized that these shrimps practically have a saddle-shaped structure with words like bow and arrow, and the muscles pull in a way to bend it like an archer's bow. He's absolutely ready. He is keen and he is ready. Look at him. Look at those eyes. To transfer all the energy into the club. Safe to say that the octopus should not have gone near the shrimp. A final Merrill spread reminds him, never judge a creature by its looks again. Giraffes fight with their necks aggressively. If these giraffes were at a punk band concert, they'd be winning at the whole head-banging thing. But that's not what's going on here. Usually, everyone thinks giraffes are gentle creatures, just going around eating leaves and all. But this is proof that they'll do anything for dominance. When they come neck to neck, literally it's a test of their strength. The giraffe with the thicker and the stronger neck usually wins the fight. They start with bagging their necks and then they start twisting and aggressively rubbing their necks. This might seem cute if it's not too aggressive, but just know that it's them fighting in their weirdest way possible. Usually, these rounds of necking can last up to half an hour, and they usually don't stop until one of them gets severely injured or even dies. Jeez. <laughs> 
the female giraffes aren't involved in any of this. They just sit back and watch them. And sometimes the female giraffes get so aroused by the sledgehammer-style fighting that the males leave what they're doing and um, move on to other more important tasks. Pufferfish makes art in sand to mate. Fish don't do anything when they have to mate. They just go over to a suitable partner and get at it. But the white-spotted pufferfish needs to impress the ladies first. These pufferfish areas are actually known for their unique courtship display. And unlike birds, it's not a pretty dance that they do. Instead, the pufferfish creates large and geometric circles in the sand. They must maintain their circles until they attract a mate. The female will come over and then evaluate its structure and then decide if the male is worth mating with. That's like a human judging if they're worth getting along with based on your drawings. And if you're a bad artist, well, there's no hope for you. These circles were noticed by divers in 1995, only a few decades ago. There are only species that do this type of dating ritual because literally no other fish can do this. But what could the female pufferfish judge from these mere sand circles? There's one theory that suggests that the bigger the pufferfish, the easier it will be to push sand. So that might be the reason, but nothing is really sure. Lemurs get intoxicated on millipedes. You know how cats get high on catnip? Well, this is somewhat similar. Here we have lemurs, the stoners of the animal kingdoms. These creatures have a bad habit of biting millipedes just to suck out the part that gives them a chemical high. When millipedes are picked up, their defense mechanism is to curl into a coil. They have glands in their legs that secrete a toxic combination of chemicals, including cyanides. But this stuff doesn't kill the lemurs. Instead, the lemurs rub this all over their fur. Some research suggests that this works as a natural pesticide, which helps ward off mosquitoes, and also acts as a narcotic. That's definitely a plus. Luckily, the millipedes get to leave completely unscratched, only to be found by the next lemur. Komodo Dragon Hug Fight Animal fights are common and they fight for a number of reasons like dominance or mating. But some animals take these rituals to a whole new level, and one of them is the Komodo dragon who hug the most in the animal kingdom. Well, hugging is usually always a display of affection, but that only applies to humans and not Komodo dragons. These dragons might look like they're sharing a loving hug or even mating when in fact they're fighting for dominance. This wrestling ritual ends up with one of them falling to ground and getting beat up. Ouch! Talk about tough love. Scorpions glow in the dark for no apparent reason. Scorpions, as they are, are pretty mysterious creatures. But one thing that makes them even cooler is that they glow in the dark. If you want to find a few for whatever reason, just grab a UV light and go into the desert in the middle of the night. If you see a stinky animal with a blue-green light, then you found your insect. Here's the part that doesn't make sense. No one knows why scorpions glow. Some researchers think that it is accidental. Look how amazing that is, man. It really, it isn't just flowing a little bit. That is a... It could be because of two chemicals that are the byproducts of natural reactions that can mix to make this fun glow. However, others propose that this could be to lure in prey, which... doesn't make too much sense since insects avoid anything fluorescent, especially scorpions. Another theory is that the glow could warn other predators or help their own kind recognize each other. Researchers think that these creatures collect UV light from the environment and create that glow. These signals could then pass to the brain, and this glow could increase the surface area of its eye by literally a thousand times. If this works out, this means that the entirety of a scorpion would work as one huge eye. Pretty wacky. Why do dolphins swim near boats? Dolphins are often cited as the second smartest animals on Earth due to their relatively high brain-to-body size ratio, the capacity to show emotion, and impressive mimicry of the dumb apes who research them. Why, despite our frequent cruelty to them, dolphins seem to actively seek out encounters with humans? Are they trying to tell us something?
Let me explain. Dolphins are intelligent, playful animals that are often seen leaping from the waves as they swim alongside ships at sea. If dolphins are swimming nearby, does that mean there are sharks nearby? It's a common piece of surfing wisdom that when dolphins swim, there are never sharks. But if you see dolphins, more often than not, there might be sharks in that same area. That's because sharks and dolphins, both of whom are carnivores, go to the same spots to hunt. Another reason is dolphins love to have fun, whether it's jumping into the air, cruising through the air at high speed, or interacting with other sea life. Dolphins have shown a streak of fun-loving behavior that indicates many things they do are simply for enjoyment's sake. All right, comment below if you learned something new today, and hit that subscribe button for more animal awesomeness. We'll see you on the next one.